Welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and in today's video we're adding a new actor to our system which has a couple of doors, it has two doors and it has a couple of drawers. Here we go, we have those and one more thing, the middle drawer is code locked so we can interact with this guy, the code is 992211 and the drawer is open. There we go. So let's begin. Um, I've already done some things beforehand. I've created a new actor and that is just a regular actor just like we did for the doors. It's a regular actor with a bunch of static mesh components. So first and foremost I have a base for this whole thing. So the base looks like this. Just a regular shelf cabinet thingy with three drawers and two doors. One thing to keep in mind of is that by default when you import the mesh it will have a simple collision so that means that that space over there so this one over here is not really accessible because the collision closes off over here. Uh, so if we would go Let's select this one, let's go to our mesh itself, let's open this up, let's enable seeing a collision box, you can see it's just a regular box around the whole thing. So in this case you have two options, you can either, well actually th three options, you can either create a custom collision, I have a video in the beginner series so you can check that out to see how you can create a custom collision on your own. Second option is to enable the complex collisions, so use complex collisions as symbol in the collision complexity, but in that case well you forget about the physics because physics are not going to work with that. The third option which I used is I just simply moved my doors and drawers a little bit outwards uh, so that they wouldn't be inside of that collision box but rather they would be on the outside of it. So that makes it work perfectly the way I want it to. So um, the next thing what I have over here also is I have the event graph and in the event graph it's very similar to like we did for the doors so if we would open up our doors just for comparison we have on begin play, we have this one thing that essentially we add one entry to our doors array and plug in all the necessary information for that. In my cabinet I've done the same thing but I've done it multiple times. So I have one for the door and I need to get the relative rotation for the door, then I have the door two and so the only difference between these is that the first one has a check so the left door has a check for the direction the other one doesn't then for the next three those are drawers and instead of using the default rotation uh, I use a relative location to plug it into the default location and that's basically all and I have three of those as you can see now I've also set up a code for the middle one so that I could show you guys also how to use a keypad for a drawer as well and the keypad is only going to be needed for that one specific drawer. So that is basically all that I've done in this actor right here. So now let's go to our door master and let's actually add the functionality that will be needed for this to work properly. Also I've noticed I already have a variable called is opening. Make sure you create this variable. It's just a regular boolean, single variable, just one value. So is opening and basically if we are already interacting with this actor, if one of the drawers is already getting opened, we must wait before the action gets completed and then we can open up the next one. So let's actually set up so that we can't open the, uh, a different door or drawer while this one is getting opened, but that is only within one actor. If those are two separate protectors obviously we can interact with those at whatever point in time we want. So first on the event open something I want to do an if branch check before I even look for the door I want to check whether we are opening something and then on false if it's false then we can try to look for the door. If we are already opening something we're not even going to bother looking for the door because that is quite pointless. Now once we have this we can then go to our open door function and over here first we are doing an if branch check to see whether the door or drawer is locked or whether it has a code uh, then we go directly to opening the doors but before that in the middle of these two branches I want to do another one because I want to check whether this is a door or it's a drawer so we have a is door there we go we plug that in and this is going to check whether it's a door or it's not. Uh, I forgot to mention that yeah in the cabinets for the doors I have checks on doors is door true but on the drawers it is false because those are not doors. So once it's false it's gonna go through this route. 
uh, actually this one right here the other branch check so this one which has the condition from the its door then once we are over here we want to do another if branch because we want to check in which direction we would need to open or close these so to do so we first need to get the default location and we want to check whether the default location is equal to the current location and to get the current location we need to drag from our component so i'm going to do a reroute over here from the component the top one and then we need to get the relative location and that can go into the B route right here. I'm going to give this some small error tolerance of one just in case, just in case things go wrong. And then this can be our condition like so. Then once we have done that, now we need a timeline similar to like we had for the doors. So let's add a timeline, new timeline. Let's call this drawer timeline. Let's open this up and I'm going to make this one second. I actually changed the doors to one second as well. So it's a little bit quicker. So I don't have to wait as long. Let's add a new float track. Let's right click, add the first entry. So time zero at the beginning, we want the value to be zero. Then let's add another value and at time one. So at the end, I want this value to be 50 uh, because, well, I assume that is a good value uh, for the movement. And I'm going to select both of these and select auto. So I would have a little bit smoother of a motion. Now to know what kind of size you need, I used 50. You can open up your cabinets and select the one of the drawers and look at the axis. So we have the zero at X, 35 at Y. If we move this out, you can see in the Y axis, if we add 50 to this, it should be just good. We can actually add around 70 to this in total. Uh, that's totally up to you. I'm just using 50. So that will be good for me. Now let's go back to our door master. Let's go to the event graph. Our timeline is all ready. So what we can do is from our component, we can now set the relative location. So set relative location. There we go. Plug that into the update. And now we actually need to make this location. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's make a vector for this so that we know where we need to place this. And for the other one, we want to get the default location, default location. And we want to actually break this vector. And from the default rotation, we can reuse the X and Z axis in my case, because those are never going to change. Only the Y axis is going to change. So we can do this new track value from the timeline plus the Y axis. And then this can go into our Y axis. So at this point, the drawers should be opening just fine. Now, few more small cleanups. This one right here, the false route. Right now it's going to go to the reverse, but we're going to adjust this in a second because we're going to have a couple of issues with this. So let me show you what's going on right now. So if we walk up, there we go. We have one, two, one, two. There we go. You can see we have some, some different issues. Uh, it's a little bit glitchy. It somewhat works, but it doesn't work perfectly. As you can see, we're going to fix that. So let's go to our door master again. We have our is opening. And what we want to do is actually over here from the first if branch check. So if this is true, that means we are allowed to open it up. So we want to set our value to be true for our is opening. There we go. So we set this to true. And now if we get to this point, we are no longer allowed to interact with another component because one of them is already in the action and we got to wait until it's finished. And then once we are finished and that is in our door timeline on finished, we want to set this thing back to false like so. And I'm going to do the same thing over here as well. We're going to set this back to false. So this is going to block the possibility for the things to get opened while one of the things is already getting opened. So it's going to make the animations and whole thing a lot smoother. It's not going to glitch back and forward as much. Now, one more thing that we should do is actually once we want to play this at the timeline, once we want to open the doors, we should use instead of play, we should use play from start. That would be a better option. And the same thing goes for reverse. Instead of using reverse, we should actually use reverse from end. And I'm going to do that for both of these. So reverse from end and play from start instead, just like so. Now, this creates us another issue. <laughs> so the more code you get, the more issues you get. The issue is that every time once we finish this thing, it's going to wait for, for for a couple of seconds and it's going to try to close it, close it, close it all over again, all over again, every four seconds. 
So what I want to do over here, once the delay is done, once we have waited for four seconds, I want to do an if branch check over here. And for the condition, I'm going to use this checking whether the relative uh, relative location uh, rotation, so the current rotation of the object is equal to the default rotation. So let's check that. And now in this case, once we are done with this, when we want to close, we want to make sure that this is false. So if this is false, if the doors are not in the default rotation, then only then we want to close those. So let's let's reconnect the true to false like so there we go that is all good and before we actually reverse from end what we also want to do is set that is opening to true so that well the system would know that we are already in the action uh, so that something is going on so that we can't interact with it while the action is still happening otherwise the movement is going to be a little bit glitchy so what we can do now is do the same thing for our drawers so i'm just going to simply copy this chunk right here paste it over here and say let's see so this one goes to reverse from end this thing right here goes to over here to the finished like so it's gonna look something like this a little bit messy we have a bunch of nodes a bunch of routes but it is what it is and for the condition we can again use this checking the current relative rotation and comparing it to the default one so it should look something like this so guys i have a tiny mistake that i've made in this video um, you're not going to see these changes that we are about to make in the next video video where we replicate this whole system because i only found out about this issue after i was done replicating uh, the issue is that if we walk up to this thing and let's say we open this one and then we open this one and then we close this and then look what happens to the door just a sec oh Okay, never mind. It didn't happen to the door. It happened to the uh, drawer itself. It is rotating and it's not stopping doing so. Uh, the issue is because, well, it's taking the last active index, getting that specific actor, uh, the specific component. So uh, if we selected the doors and then the drawers is going to glitch out the uh, what it needs to use, whether it's the rotation or the location instead. So one of these two. So what we want to do to fix this issue is here on this branch check after we do the delay for four seconds. Uh, for the condition first, we want to use a AND boolean check because we need to check two conditions. So the first condition in the top for the door for the rotation is we want to get the NOT value from the relative rotation compared to the current one. So from that one, we want to do a NOT and connect that to the top one like so then for the bottom one we want to use our is door so let's get our is door connect that to the bottom and then for the if branch we can reconnect this from false to true so now this is going to fix our issue with the doors with the drawers it's a little bit different so again we want to do a and so let's do an and boolean check then from the location check we want to get the not value again so the not goes at the top and now for the is door we're going to get the is door and get the not value again. And then that is our B route like so. And then again, we can reconnect the branch from the false to the true. So it, look, it should look like this. And now the issue is going to be gone and it's going to work just fine. So now uh, that is basically it for the drawers. Now they're fully functioning. We have doors and we have drawers in the same actor. And you can have as many as you like. You just simply need to add more to the um, to the cabinet actor in the begin play like I have done over here. Now let's talk about the code. So I have one drawer is code locked. And like I said, uh, now it is important to provide an index. And in the doors array, um, we have a bunch of entries. What we got to remember is that this begins with zero. Arrays always begin with zero. So this is zero, this is one, this is two, and this is number three. So we want to use the index 3 with this specific code. So let's go to our viewport of the game. Let's drag in our keypad that we created previously. I'm going to move this next to this. And now we have some default uh, properties that we need to provide. So first we need the actor itself. So let's click on this thing and let's select our cabinet. It's selected our cabinet and now we need to provide the door index. In our case, this is 0, 1, 2 and we have the third one. So I'm pl plugging in 3 we can now press play, walk up to this guy, and we have the 992211, enter, and the drawer is getting open once we input the code. There we go. And it's getting closed after four seconds. So that's going to be it for this video. 
Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new. Hope this was helpful. And I hope to see you in the next one.